I would usually have to do like a neon pink for him or something. Unless I thought I like failed, then I'd do it on patterned paper, so it would be more strugglesome for him to mark. You might be asking what this device right here is. And that's what today's video is all about, my friends. Braille. You have been waiting for this video for years. I am finally gonna give you the lowdown, the rundown, the 101 on the language of the blind Braille. Join the movement, find your voice in the fight for girls' global education. Empower, educate, and support the next generation of women. And now we're gonna get into your own little educational lesson on Braille. All right, I honestly don't even know where to begin because there is just so much to cover. So before we even get into this machine, I want to give you my history with Braille. So I was diagnosed with my eye disease, retinitis pigmentosa, when I was four years old. And when I was in senior kindergarten, which I know you don't have here in America, but I'm Canadian and we had junior and senior kindergarten before grade one. So when I was in senior kindergarten and I was five years old, I began my pre-Braille training. So I did about one year of pre-Braille training with a vision itinerant, which is basically the person within the school board that teaches you Braille and supports the blind students. So my pre-braille training included mainly finger sensitization and finger strengthening. So before you can like read all those tiny little dots and codes, you need to have the sensitivity and the strength. So that included things like taking this, it's so vivid in my mind, this pink bubblegum scented clay and molding it. So it's thicker than Play-Doh, it's more like a clay consistency and molding it to build the finger strength. That included things like having a booklet with six pieces of identical looking fabric and two felt the same and the others didn't and it would get increasingly harder as you got more skilled so you'd have to feel the difference with your fingertips different things like that and then you got into like tactile books so you would have to like trace images and discover what the image was of stuff like that so that's the pre braille training and then it got into learning the coded dot system and so a braille cell which is six dots so everything in braille is made up of six dots that's it every letter every number every symbol, everything in math, everything in music is made up of six dots. That's it. That's all. Pretty crazy. It's actually the widest used language by the blind community worldwide and the same six dots are used in every single version of Braille, which is pretty amazing because there is no other language like that in existence. So kind of crazy. It was weird. Like when I was in South Korea a few years ago, I could recognize all the dots and letters. They were just in orders that didn't make sense to me because I don't speak Korean. So it's pretty fascinating. I used to be the number one like hater of Braille. Was I not mom like the <laughs> worst at learning Braille? Like I refused. I was so difficult about it. I can't even believe we're doing this video to be honest. It was that bad. It was really tough but I am now, my mom also tested this, the number one proponent to learning Braille. I am 100% always the person telling parents of young blind children you need to have them learn Braille. It is your access to proper education and on Honestly, it's becoming a real problem that a lot of young blind kids, because technology is so much more further advanced in terms of what it can do for blind people nowadays than it was when I was younger, it wasn't an option for me to just learn technology. It wasn't there yet. I had to learn Braille. But young people nowadays who are blind can just learn technology. But there's so much that learning technology doesn't teach you about phonetics of the English language in particular. The English language is not phonetic. But if you're only ever hearing things read out loud to you and you're not ever seeing them written down or feeling them under your fingers, you will never learn proper grammar, you will never learn proper spelling, and I truly believe that Braille is the only way to teach somebody who is blind to properly spell and understand grammar in the English language. So I really think it's very important. So even though I fought it real hard, I am very happy that my parents really pushed it and the school board really pushed it. And so with these tiny six full Braille cells, I'm gonna try to put as many images up as possible to help you guys. I've never taught people Braille before. I mean, I did a video where I taught curly cloths, but that was just for fun. Like, I've never actually had to teach people Braille. So here's a full Braille cell, all six dots. Now that is like this big. It is teeny, 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 tiny. And so when you're beginning to learn, I had like this big, 
big wooden block that was the size of like a brick and then there was movable wooden pegs that would stick out of it to make the full braille cell and that's how I would learn I would play and I would take the pins in and out of the braille cell to learn to make different letters and symbols so that's how it began and it all kind of went from there from you know fun games and books and toys to learn braille which by the way speaking of toys now there is braille Lego which I think is so cool and I wish existed when I was younger and if anybody can get their hands on some please send it to me I want it <laughs> so there is more and more fun ways to learn braille coming out all the time this is late 90s early 2000s it's not what it is today it was 1999 when I began learning braille wow I feel real old <laughs> so half the people watching this probably weren't even born until like 2006 whatever it's fine so where to start this is a brailler. This is a standard old Perkins brailler. I mean, this is a new version. So these are the six keys that I was talking about. So we have these three, these three. This middle one is the space bar. So that's how you put your spaces. This one over here goes backspace. And this one over here goes down a line. This is your cursor, old school cursor. So this is what moves across. And then on the sides here, we have these, which is how you roll your paper into the machine. And back here is where you put your paper and where you can read as you write. It has this kind of handle right here to be able to pick it up by. This one is red and silver. Here's the bottom in case you're wondering. There is some braille on the bottom. Now, this is a kind of more new version. I got this probably in like 2013, 2014. It was a gift, very generous. These are not cheap, hundreds if not thousands of dollars, depending on which one you get. I still do, back home in Toronto, have my OG brailler that I got in 1999 which is the true standard classic Perkins. It will survive the atomic bomb. It weighs like 25 pounds. It is ridiculous. It's all made of metal and I covered it in tactile stickers. I'm going to try to see if my dad in Toronto can take a photo so we can insert it. I have had those stickers on it since early 2000s. That thing has been through hell and back with me through math homework and projects and essays and so much. So that's my old school one. This is my more new one. So I have one at home in Toronto, one here with me in LA. You would not believe trying to travel on an airplane with this, my friends, <laughs> to get it here. And then there's other versions as well. So there's Braille printers. So just like I could type up a document on a computer and then print it in print, I can type up a document on a computer and print it in Braille. Those things are extremely expensive. I did have one all throughout my schooling. So the school board provided me with one. But obviously, like after I left school, I left that with them. They're like huge machines. They're so loud. It's crazy because it's embossing so many holes into the paper at once. But I'll put an image here. Then there is a slate and stylus, the classic, the old school, the orridge, orridge. Before brailers were in existence, the slate and stylus. Now that is right here. It's this tiny little piece of plastic and this little metal pin. And you basically have to backwards write everything in braille. So crazy. I was never able to get the hang of that. So glad I didn't have to live life like that. And then there is braille displays, which is almost like a little thin piece. And it has just electronic braille pins. So they poke up and down and it shows you what's on your computer. So times when that would be really useful is say if you were in class and you were trying to take notes on a computer with what the teacher is saying, but you can't listen to the teacher and listen to your voiceover on your computer, you would be able to type in to what the teacher is saying and then read on the display what you're typing to make sure you're following along. So that's a braille display and then there's braille notes, which are essentially like full on braille computers. I always wanted one. I've never gotten to have one. That's okay. They're really expensive, thousands of dollars. And they are so cool. It's basically, it's like an entire computer, but just braille. So it has all the exact same keys you saw on this. They're only like five to eight pounds, like this big. It has the six braille buttons, braille keys, this backspace. And then it has a thicker display where the braille pins, just like the display, pop up and down. So those are all the current braille contraptions, at least that I'm aware of. But I've always just had kind of the classic standard Perkins braillers. I'm going to link all of these things below. I'm also going to link a little bit about the history of braille. braille was created in France by a man named Louis Braille who went blind due to an accident at his father's workshop and at the time he went to a school for the blind in Paris France and I've actually been I visited the school I visited Louis Braille's gravesite as well and at the time they were raising letters so they were basically doing tactile print letters for blind people and people often will ask me why don't they do that like why don't they just raise regular letters regular print letters into tactile letters and blind people can read that way well let me tell you to create a 
tactile print letter that's actually legible, you would have to make it so big. And then you're tracing these letters and trying to put a word together. Versus Braille with the code, because it is a, it's a coded language, these aren't tactile regular letters, it's a totally separate code, you are able to feel entire letters with just the tip of one finger. So that's the reason they previously were doing that and then Louis Braille came and was like, this isn't the right way. It was this whole debacle in the blind community. I'm gonna leave info below. But anyways, it's really fascinating, at least I think it is. And so basically, like I said, you read Braille with just the tip of your finger. So you just read Braille with your two tips of your index fingers. So the way you read Braille is you trace along, trace back, go down, trace along, go back, go down, and that's how you read braille with just the tips of two fingers. I don't know, I think that's so wild. Whenever people would be like, oh my God, you read braille, that's so cool. I used to be like, it's not that cool, it's just like the language. Now I'm like, yeah, it is so cool. I read with my fingers entire like mathematical equations, alphabets, it's nuts. You couldn't have learned math without. I couldn't, no, no I could not have learned math without Nemeth, which is the braille math code, Nemeth. It's impossible. Yeah, it's really hard. So thank God for braille, honestly. And now I want to get into the forms of Braille. So like I said, it's the most widely used language within the blind community, yada, yada, yada. Now there's two main types of Braille and it actually has changed recently over the past few years. I'm not as up to date because I learned in the late 90s, early 2000s. So I'm not up to date on like the newfangled version of Braille. But what when I grew up learning, it was grade one Braille or uncontracted Braille and grade two Braille, contracted Braille. So grade one Braille is basic alphabetic Braille. Grade two Braille is shorthand Braille. So so because, like I said, when, you know, Braille is much more condensed than being able to try to read tactile print letters from the typical cited alphabet. However, it is still very lengthy. For example, a typical grade 10 math textbook would translate to like 75 binders of Braille that were about that thick. One textbook that was that thick would translate into 75 textbooks or binders that were that thick in Braille. So it is very dense and that's why you don't see Braille books in the library. Libraries, you know? God, I'm sorry, this video is gonna be so long because I just have so much to cover. And honestly, that's probably why I've never done it before because I knew it was just so much information to tell you guys. I hope you guys are finding this interesting enough to stay tuned until I actually get into teaching the Braille. There is such a long history to Braille and that's kind of why I have to go into all this. Anyways, so, but that's why there isn't like the Harry Potter book in Braille at your local library. And that's why honestly, audiobooks are a better alternative. Braille really is a code and therefore it is a decoding language. You're really decoding it as you go. Letter by letter, word by word, sentence by sentence. You know, I don't even know necessarily, unless it's obvious, like starting with how or what, if it's going to be a question till I get to the question mark at the end. With sight, it's a little different. You're almost kind of reading ahead as you're reading. And so because it's a decoding language, you're decoding while trying to understand and process it, which can be very difficult. So I really find for enjoyment reading, I wouldn't do anything but an audiobook. However, Braille, aside from the importance of things like in school learning math, I still love having it for elevator buttons, for bathroom doors in public restaurants, menus, if they end up having a braille menu, certain things like that, I really do find it convenient. Being able to braille label things in my kitchen or in my makeup collection, I find that way more convenient. So that's why I still think, despite the fact that I don't believe braille is a good language to necessarily like sit down and read a book in, it is a good language to still have. And trust me, my English teacher in grade 10, he still made me read Lord of the Flies in braille, cover to cover. That was a fun one. So anyways, because it is so cumbersome, it is so lengthy, that's when they came up with contracted Braille grade two Braille. So instead of T-H-E, there'd be one symbol that represented the. Instead of S-T, T-H, I-N-G, kind of all of these typical things you see in the English language, there'd be shorthands. And it's funny because it is such an old language with so much history, there's also some funny ones like dot five L is Lord. Well, we don't use Lord much in our English language nowadays, but that was obviously a word that would have been frequently used way back when this was created. So there's some ones that don't resonate still today. And I think that's why they kind of updated Braille a number of years ago to kind of make it a little more hip and up to date with the times. But okay, I think I've covered as much as I'm gonna cover. I feel like I've put you through so much information. Let's just get into what you're really interested in, a bit of Braille 101 in terms of this machine and the language it creates. Now, this is the keyboard. This is how you position your keys, kind of wrists up. You don't wanna be slacking like that. Wrists up like this. It's gonna be way more comfortable over time. Here, so dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five, dot six. 
That's important. They all have their own numbers. That's how we refer to them as. If we're speaking to each other about Braille, we would say like OS is dot two, dot three, and dot four. So that's why I'm giving you those numbers. And then you would use kind of these fingers to use that and then space bar with this. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Boom! That's the alphabet. Now, this, this is an exclamation mark. This is a question mark. This is a number sign. This is a period. This is a comma. This is an apostrophe. So you see, you create all these symbols and then there's, you know, letter symbols. If you're talking about Nemeth code, there's the number symbol and then there's the letter symbol. Now the reason you have the number symbol is because A is also number one. B is also number two. C is also number three. And so if you're interchanging between letters and numbers, you're gonna want to put the number sign. This dot six here is a capital. And if you want to make kind of caps lock, if you want the whole word to be in capitals, you would do click it twice. So you'd have two dot sixes in a row and then you'd know the entire word is capitalized versus just one is the first letter is capitalized in the word. In terms of braille paper, it's like a thick kind of cardstock paper. Thin paper isn't gonna work. The holes are just gonna rip right through the paper. The paper's just gonna shred. So, and you need the dots to stay. So this cardstock kind of feeling, it keeps the dots raised. Over time, you know, if the paper's too soft, the dots are just gonna fade. And even with this, over a long period, the dots fade, which is why when you're looking at, say, a washroom door or um, elevator buttons or even braille labels, it would be in a more plastic because it, it keeps the bumps raised over time they're not gonna fade there is braille label makers actually so it's like this little machine and you go look through and it prints out these plastic sticky labels you peel them off and stick them to things very useful but usually braille paper isn't patterned this is a molly specialty I got bored of like lane braille paper which is usually like a buff cream color and I decided I wanted to be funky so I went to Michael's when I was like probably 14 15 years old and I found that their cardstock with fun printed things on it and fun bright colors was just as thick as braille paper and so I would hand in I went to the school for the blind for grade 9 and 10 and so all the teachers at the school for the blind can read braille it's prerequisite they have to mark papers all the time in braille so I would hand in this kind of stuff to my math teacher he'd be like Molly I can't read this because uh, like braille teachers are always print readers I personally have not met one braille teacher that can finger read sight reading braille is not a problem you yourself could go online look at a braille code converter and learn braille very quickly and easily if you're good at memorizing code you can learn braille. You just can't learn it with your fingers. That's the hard part. The only braille teachers that I've ever heard of that can read braille with their fingers are also blind. I don't know any sighted braille readers that read with their fingers. And I've personally only had sighted braille teachers. So I would usually have to do like a neon pink for him or something. Unless I thought I like failed, then I'd do it on patterned paper. So it would be more strugglesome for him to mark. Now this is how I'm gonna put my paper in. Once the paper is in, you always want to Go down a line, at least one line, to set your paper, like lock it in place essentially. Now, I'm just gonna do, now I don't like, I don't braille a lot anymore, but I'm just gonna show you, for humble brag's sake, how fast I can braille a real sentence. And this is me having not utilized braille as a full time for about eight or nine years since I graduated high school. Again, that makes me feel very old. But here we go. The big dog was big. So I used to be like a machine on this thing, like just so quick. And yeah, the braille just pops up there and you can feel it with your fingers. So I don't really know what else there is to teach you. I feel like I've given you kind of the 101, the basics of how this language works. I'm gonna also link some good websites that are accurately converting print into braille. All of the hoodies that I sell on my merch store are in grade one uncontracted braille. The mint one and the black and white one both say Molly Burke in uncontracted grade one braille. And the maroon one says love and print and then yourself in braille underneath.
little self-love message. So that is all in grade one uncontracted. The reason I don't use grade two contracted braille on things is because the school board that I was originally in when they taught me grade one braille refused to teach me grade two braille. And it wasn't until I switched school systems when I was in grade six where they had a bigger budget for blind students in the board that they actually were willing to teach me grade two braille. But by that time, grade seven came around real quick and I switched to using computers most of the time. And then I lost my vision in grade eight and then I went to school for the blind for grade nine and 10. But they were like, just stick with grade one braille at this point. So I only learned grade two braille when I was 11 years old for one year in grade six. And then I kind of never utilized it again. So I still know the basic contractions. And if you hand me grade two braille, I can like get by. It's almost like putting the puzzle together. I know enough of it and I know enough to like string it together, but it's difficult. I don't like to get letters in grade two braille. I don't like to put things into grade two braille. Grade one is like my main language. So let me know if there's anything you guys would like to see more of, learn more of. If you want to understand more of the concept behind the code, if any of you are really into code, you might have recognized when my fingers were going is like A, K, L, it all falls in the same line. So there is some kind of history and kind of intellect put behind where that code leads and how the dots are formed and why the pattern is the way it is. So if you want more of a history on that, if basically if anything I touched on in this video you want me to go more in depth about, please comment down below and let me know because I'm happy to do a follow-up video where I do go more in depth and I teach you more and talk about it more. But there was just so much to cover in this Braille 101 video that it's so long already that I'm just gonna leave it here, I think. Thank you guys for watching and for the new series on women's education globally. I'm gonna link it below. Like I said, please go watch it. I really encourage it. As I spoke about in this video, education is so important no matter who you are, where you live, or what your ability and circumstance is. Everybody deserves to get an education and it is so empowering when we receive one. So definitely check that out and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Join the movement and find your voice in the fight for girls' global education. Celebrate International Women's Day with us this March 